Okay, so this chapter, chapter four is about cell membrane. When we talk about cell membrane, basically what we are going to learn is the detailed structure of the plasma membrane of a cell. Okay, right. So how to understand the plasma membrane of a cell? So I'm going to draw the picture over here. So you can draw as well. Okay, ataupun nanti you ambil gambar. Ataupun refer back to the recording later on. Okay, right. So again, kita... Right, so let's say we have a cell. Okay, refer back. Let's say this is our chick cell. Right, tak kisah uh, for the animal cell or for the plant cell. Semua ada plasma mem membrane. Okay, remember, this is the nucleus. Jangan tengok medan, tengok depan eh. Okay, so this is the chromo chromosome. Right, okay. So, medium label. So, this is plasma membrane. Alright. So, this is the nucleus structure. Right. So, inside here is the uh, chromo chromosome. Okay. So, plasma membrane tu, right, if you zoom in, okay, sekejap sebelum tu, okay, ingat balik dalam sel, ni yang bersambung dengan nuclear envelope ni, siapa ni? Lepas tu dia ada ribosome dekat dia, siapa ni? Ah, very good. Kalau ada ribosome, nama dia RAF, RAF ER kan? Okay, so madam, I just put as RER, RAF ER. Okay, ah, so mungkin sebelah sini yang tak ada ribosome, right, ah, so ini, this one is, Smooth ER. Okay, and then pancake stack like structure. Okay, so this is gold, Golgi. Golgi apparatus. Okay, and we do have kecil kecil sangat. Uh, this is ribosome. Okay, and yang bulat besar sikit. Apa ni? Liso. Liso zone, very good. Okay, if you can recap this kind of picture, that is good enough. Meaning you can identify the structure. Okay, right. Now, what I am going to focus is the plasma membrane. Okay, so plasma membrane ni, if we zoom in, the structure. Kita besarkan image plasma membrane tu. Remember you have learned in the uh, in the chapter before, chapter 2, for, it is made of phospholipid by bilayer. So this is our structure of plasma membrane. It is made of phospholipid bilayer. Right, uh, so this is what we might have ataupun we will observe as we zoom into the structure of the plasma membrane. So it is made of the phospholipid bilayer.
Okay. Alright. So the phospholipid bilayer. Siapa ingat? The structure yang bulat-bulat ni apa? Bahagian apa ni? Head. Head dia sifat apa? Hydrophilic or hydrophobic? Hydrophilic head. Okay, very good. Hydrophilic head. Okay, hydrophilic head. Boleh baca ya, eh? tulisan medium eh? Okay. Right, and what about the, this one? Uh, yang bahagian kaki dua tu. So this is hydro, hydrophobic tail. Hydrophobic tail, okay. Alright, recap. A little bit. Chapter 2. Sebagai ulang kaji sikit-sikit. Okay, the head. Hydrophilic head. What is the component of the head? Apa component head? Yang membentuk kepala tu apa? Untuk phospholipid. Ingat tak? Additional group. Lagi apa? Phosphate group. Okay, very good. Tengok nota chapter 2. Okay. Yang paling penting apa? Glide. Ah, number one is glycerol. Tengok chapter two, subtopic phospholipid. Glycerol plus phosphate group. Plus uh, additional. Additional group or additional attachment. Okay. For the head. Bahagian kepala. Right. So bahagian kepala boleh berinteraksi dengan A, air atau cecair. Ya. So this is outside the membrane. Ni bahagian luar. Right. And this is cytosol. Uh, so the hydrophilic head can interact uh, on the outside of the environment like a fluid. Ataupun it can interact with the inside of the cell which is cyto, cytosol. Okay, right. So what about the hydrophobic tail? What is the component of the hydrophobic tail? Three ke two fatty acid? Tengok kaki dia ada berapa? Dua. So two fatty, fatty acid. Okay, two fatty acid. Chains. Okay, two fatty acid chains uh, ataupun uh, two chains of fatty acids. Right, uh, so it is hydrophobic. That's why you can see kaki dia dua-dua mengadap bahagian dah dalam because they are hydropho hydrophobic. Understand? Okay. Next one. As you can see from here, from this chapter, so this is just introduction dulu. So I'm drawing you the picture so to give you an overview of the plasma membrane. Okay, so a part of the phospholipid bilayer protein kita juga ada eh sorry plasma membrane kita juga ada pro proteins okay so you can see here this is the proteins these are all proteins so nama protein ni ialah integral macam tulis dulu kejap kita akan jumpa dia integral membrane protein Integral. Integral membrane protein. And lagi satu protein yang ada, you nampak kat sini, dia duduk celah-celah saja. Right? Dia duduk di tepi-tepi, di sisi-sisi. Nama dia peripheral protein. Okay? Peripheral protein. Peripheral means CC. Okay, uh, kalau orang Sabah dia panggil siring. Uh, dia duduk di siring-siring. Okay. Right. Right. Di tepi-tepi macam tu. Okay, alright. So that is um, proteins. So we have uh, on the membrane, the integral membrane protein or peripheral uh, pro protein. Okay, 
Right. So this is overview eh. So jangan macam pening-pening. Memang pening sebab kita baru nak kenal dia. Okay. Right. And one more thing that we can found uh, across the membrane uh, ialah you can see dekat celahan-celahan celah fatty acid you can see four membered ring. You akan jumpa ada empat ring bersambung. Siapakah dia? Ha, kita dah belajar chapter 2. Four ring. Four fused ring. Dia ialah Kolesterol, yes. Kolesterol. Okay, cholesterol and ada lagi sikit. Okay, introduction. Kenal dulu siapa-siapa dia ni. Right. Okay, lagi. Next. On the protein, right, there are few carbohydrate chains. Ada rantaian carbohydrate that attach to the protein. Rantaian carbohydrate yang melekat kepada protein. Nama dia ialah Glycoprotein. So I put it here. Nama dia ialah Glycoprotein. Okay, and also there are carbohydrate chains, carbohydrate chain, rantaian carbohydrate yang melekat kepada phospholipid. So, dia carbohydrate, dia adalah carbohydrate. So, depan dia perkataan glyco, tapi dia attach kepada phospholipid. So, namanya glycolipid. Ah, okay. Glycolipid. Okay, so far can you follow? Right, uh, so meaning to say on the membrane you have the first polypid bilayer, you have proteins like integral membrane proteins and also peripheral protein. Okay, uh, kita juga akan jumpa koles, kolesterol. Kita juga akan jumpa carbohydrate that attach to protein, namanya glycoprotein. And carbohydrate that attach to lipid, namanya glycolipid. Okay, right. Okay. So, this is what your membrane looks like. Okay, right. So, you can capture or maybe later you can um, refer back to the video. Okay, as I posted later. Okay, right. Okay, so to uh, okay, hang on. okay, all right. So to understand more, so apa yang kita akan belajar dalam chapter ni? Kita akan belajar komponen. Okay, you dah nampak dah per komponen komponen dia. What are the function of each components? Apa function setiap satu komponen dekat membrane tu? Right? And next we are going to learn about transport. Apakah bahan-bahan yang boleh melalui membrane? Boleh me, dihantar menerusi membrane? And how the, the the molecule or substances is being transport? Transport. Okay? So itu kita akan belajar. Alright. Okay. So as introduction of this chapter. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is what you have in your notes. Do you have this picture? Like this. Oh, tak ada. Oh, gambar ni penting. So, ambil gambar atau nanti later refer dekat Madam punya slide. Okay, I mean the video. Okay, right. So, this is the component of membrane. Right, you can see again what we have uh, uh, introduced just now. Right, 
So you have the proteins. Sorry, number one, you have the phospholipid by bilayer that have the head, hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. And then we have pro proteins like integral membrane protein. Yang ini, integral membrane protein. So ini pun sama, integral membrane protein, right? And we have peripheral pro protein. This one is peripheral protein. Okay, right? Also, we found yellowish color over here, the kacela-cela, whose polypid bilayer is cholesterol. Okay, and then you have carbohydrate attached to lipid. Ni, namanya glycolipid, right? And you have also carbohydrate attached to the protein, so we call it as glycopro, glycoprotein. Okay, so far okay? Ada pun nak tanya? Madam, yang gulung-gulung ni apa? Uh, what is this? Uh, this is the X-ray X-ray structure of the protein. Maksudnya, protein ni kalau awak X-ray dia, dalam dia, itu bentuknya. Right? Uh, so, the inner structure of the protein. Meaning, kalau you tengok dia, you, you pakai X-ray, you nampak dalam dia bentuk macam mana. Uh, so, that is uh, the, the structure or the shape of the pro protein. Okay, itu nanti kita belajar. Right, so first sekarang you kena tahu what is this, what is this, what is this, what is this. Itu paling penting. Okay, right. Okay, next we go here. Introduction. Okay, what is cell membrane? So cell membrane is biological membrane. So dia adalah membrane of living things. Okay, uh, so it is a biological, remember bila kata biological, something that is living lah. Okay, so it's a biological membrane that separate yang mengasingkan interior of the cell, which refers to the cytosol or cytoplasm, right? Plasma membrane mengasingkan environment di dalam cell, iaitu refer kepada the environment inside the cytosol, from its outside environment. Uh, so we refer to extracellular fluid. Environment di luar daripada cell. Uh, extra means uh, luar lah. Cellular cell fluid. Cairan di luar cell. Okay. Or cell membrane also refers to the membrane that surround the orga, organelle. Okay, contoh, minum lukis lagi sel, right? So, you have nucleus over here. You have the DNA or the chromosome inside the nucleus, right? Ingat balik kita ada organel, contoh organel kita, mitokon. Mitokondria. Mitokondria ada membrane ke tak ada? Ada membrane. Satu ke dua layer? Dua layer, very good. So, this is what we call as membrane surrounding the organel. Okay. So, membrane also separating the interiors of the cell. Ni, interior of the cell. We are referring to the cytosol. And also referring to the, uh, separating the environment outside the cell. Okay. So, that is the purpose of membrane. Okay. Supaya apa sahaja komponen dalam cell tidak bercampur dengan apa sahaja yang di luar daripada cell. Okay. Alright, then, Okay. Kalau medium laju, bagi tahu. Okay. Next. So, these are the things that we are going to learn. Alright. So, tak apa. Tak payah salin. Alright. So, we are going to learn uh, fluid mosaic model, uh, function of the membrane, mechanism of transport, water potential, keupayaan air, and also calcul cal calculation related to water. Okay. Right. So, let's start with LO number one. So, LO number one is describe and explain structure of membrane based on fluid mosaic model. So, you have to know the structure of membrane berdasarkan fluid mosaic model. Okay. Right, the LO is to describe and explain. Sahaja, structure of mem membrane. Uh, very easy, tak ada apa.
Ya Allah, nak salin juga. Tak payah salin. Nanti ambil gambar je ya. Right? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Alright. Alright, fluid mosaic model. Okay. So, the the membrane structure has been proposed by two scientists nama dia Singer and Nicholson. They berkata the fluid mosaic model, right, is where the plasma membrane is a mosaic of proteins molecule. Okay, it's a mosaic of protein molecule that is unbanded. Unbanded sama dengan, maksud dengan attach, melekat, okay, unbanded. Okay, mosaic of protein that unbanded and float in a fluid by layer of phospholipid. Okay, tak boleh bayang lah media macam mana. Macam ni, awak tengok mosaic lantai ni. Tengok daripada atas. Tengok ke bawah. Ha, so, dia kata this fluid mosaic model is like a mosaic of protein. So, kita tengok daripada atas, kita nampak macam dia adalah benda-benda terapung-terapung macam ice cube dekat tengah-tengah laut. Right? Ha, yang melekat di phospholipid by bilayer. Ha, macam tu. Okay, dia kata. Right? Where you can see this is the phospholipid bilayer. Right? And this is the pro-proteins. The proteins are embedded, melekat and floating within the phospholipid by bilayer. Okay. Di mana the protein tu ada dua bahagian. You tengok ni kenapa dia buat gambar dia ada warna lain-lain. Ada nak tunjukkan yang protein ni ada bahagian yang hydrophilic. This is also hydrophilic. Yang ni hydrophilic eh. Bahagian yang boleh terdedah dan interaksi dengan uh, cecair uh, ataupun environment. Okay. Yang dalam ni. Uh, ini adalah bahagian hydro, hydrophobic of the protein. Bahagian protein yang tidak boleh berinteraksi dengan air. Okay. Take note benda ni because we are going to see, explore it after this. Right? Uh, so take note. So protein ada dua bahagian. Hydrophilic region of the protein and hydrophobic region of the protein. Hydrophobic akan duduk di tengah-tengah sebab dia tak boleh interaksi dengan air. Dia takut dengan air. Okay. Okay, done? Okay ke? Alright. Okay, next. According to Singer and Nicholson as well, dia kata membrane are not a static sheets. Maksudnya membrane kita ni bukan kegah kejung macam tu. Bukan. They are actually held together by hydrophobic inter interaction. So dia bukan keras that lock rigidly in a place. Dia bukan keras dan stay kat situ je. Tapi sebenarnya lipid and some protein can move in the mem in the membrane. Okay. Ha, maksudnya you bayangkan mozaik ni. Sebenarnya mozaik ni boleh. Ni pergi sini, ni pergi sini, ni pergi sini, ni pergi sini, ni pergi sini. Dia boleh macam tu. Sebenarnya. Okay. Alright. So there are two conditions of the membrane. You can see. One condition is the membrane is in a little bit fluid. Membrane kita sedikit cair. Bukan lembek eh. Ada sedikit cair. Membrane kita. Membrane medium. Membrane kat mana medium. Uh, senang nak cerita. Kau tengok je bawah kulit kau tu. Setiap kulit kita ni adalah adalah ada sel. So bila ada sel dia mesti ada mem membrane. Uh, so sel kulit kita tu. Alright. Uh, so kalau sel kulit kita tu cair. Kita cair lah ni. Cair. Uh, kan? uh, so dia bukan cair ya. Eh? Dia macam ala-ala sedikit. Kurang likat. Ah, see. Okay. Alright. And the second one is the membrane is in a viscous condition. Viscous maksudnya sedikitly likat. Likat. Okay. So apa yang menyebabkan membrane ada yang dalam keadaan sedikit fluid, ada yang keadaan sedikit likat. So that is because the fatty acid because of the fatty acid chain. 
Ha, cuba tengok yang fluid. Kenapa dia agak cair? Membran kita agak fluid. Agak lebih bebas protein tu untuk bergerak nanti. Apa yang menyebabkan dia agak cair? Fatty acid dia apa? Unsaturated. Bukan kurang, you can see. Fatty acid dia unsaturated. Ingat kalau unsaturated ada apa maksudnya? Ada king. King tu maksudnya apa? Presence of double double bond. Presence of carbon to carbon double bond. Okey, tengok ni. Tengok ni, tengok ni. Satu kaki dia lurus, satu kaki dia bang, bengkok. So, bila yang you nampak bengkok ni, kita panggil sebagai king. Remember? Dah belajar chapter 2? Uh, so, bila ada king tu, meaning that the fatty acid has carbon to carbon double bond. Uh, ini penting. Salin. Right? Uh, so, presence of king mean it has carbon to carbon double bond. Uh, so, what happens bila ada king? Bila ada carbon to carbon double bond? So, the molecule is not packing tight so you nampak tak kat sini ada rongga sini ada rongga sini ada rongga molecule tu tak apa tak padat the fatty acid is not pack tightly so ni eh prevent packing to enhance membrane fluidity okay so this is the reason when there is presence of king, so king avoid the um, apa nama? Uh, phospholipid, right? To be packedly uh, tight, ataupun tightly pack. Dia tak apa, dia tak padat. Okay, right? Okay, so next, viscous, right? What makes the membrane is somehow like viscous? Dia jadi likat sikit. So, bila likat, dia padat. So, apa menyebabkan dia padat? Uh, because of saturated fatty air, fatty acid. Saturated fatty acid. You can see bila disebabkan nampak dua-dua kaki ni semua satu saturated. Bila saturated maknanya no carbon to carbon uh, double bond or no king. No king. K-I-N-K. Right? Uh, so if there is no king Meaning that there is no carbon to carbon double, double bond. So what happened? You can see the molecule is uh, tightly packed together. That's why membrane become viscous. Okay, right. Okay, boleh? Any question? Kindly ask. Okay. Tadi. Okey Mira. Umu okey. Nama-nama yang dia dah panggil tu insya-Allah dia dah ingat dah. Gitu. Anas tak payah tanyalah kan. Okey. Alright. Number 2. Okey. Number 2 describe properties of membrane's component. Okay, we are going to detail out each component of the membrane. Kita pergi satu-satu. Okay, right. Ini apa, ini apa, ini apa, apa fungsi dia dan sebagainya. Okay, right. 
So we are going to explore. So you don't have to salin the the LO. You nampak tak sub topic you? Sub topic you tulis apa kat situ? Uh, properties of membrane component. You just tambah kat hujung tu apa dia? Phospholip. Ah, okay, describe. <laughs> ah, describe. Lepas tu tambah kat hujung tu. Phospholipid, protein, carbohydrate and cholesterol. Ah. So ini je yang kita perlu tahu. Describe the property and the function. Function of what? Function of phospholipid, function of protein, function of carbohydrate, function of cholesterol. Okay, then, all right. Okay, so we start with number one, phospho, phospholipid. All right, so remember the com first component of the plasma membrane is the phospholipid, where the phospholipid is made of phospholipid by bilayer, dui lapisan, right? So what is the structure of the phospholipid kita dah discuss? It is divided into the hydrophilic, Head and also hydrophobic tail. Gambar ni ada ke? Ada, ada, ada. Ah, uh, Ada, okay. Ah, uh, Ada, right. So the hydrophilic head comprises of glycerol, right. And it is comprises of phos uh, phos phosphate group and maybe additional attachment, right. Okay, right. And then the hydrophobic tail uh, comprises of two fatty air. Fatty acid chain, two fatty acid. You can see one over here is saturated, and the other over here is un unsaturated fatty acid. Okay, madam, habis tu dia memang akan satu macam ni, satu macam ni ke? Tak semestinya, depend. Kalau membrane kita viscous, dua-dua akan satu saturated. If our membrane is fluid, dia akan yang macam satu straight, satu lagi kink. Right. Uh, so again and again, why it is known as unsaturated fatty acid due to presence of uh, carbon to carbon double bond or kink. Presence of kink, so meaning that it has carbon to carbon double bond. Okay. Ni dah ulang banyak kali dah perkataan ni. So kalau keluar exam tak dijawab, aku tak tahulah. Okay. okay? Uh, all right. And the saturated fatty acid, you can see here. Because there is no kink, uh, so no carbon to carbon double bond. Okay. Alright, uh, so this is the structure of the phospholipid. Okay. All right, so let's look at the properties. Phospholipid property, it is amphi amphiphatic. Sifat phospholipid ialah amphiphatic. Kena salin kan perkataan amphiphatic tu kan? Okay, what does it mean by having amphipathic property? It has both hydrophilic and also hydrophobic. Okay. What is hydrophilic means? The hydrophilic means, kenapa uh, yang hydrophilic tu refer kepada head ke refer kepada tail? Ah, uh, Hydrophilic, philic. Ah, uh, refer to the head. Hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic is referred to the tail. Uh, so you can see here. Right? So the hydrophilic is referred to the negative polar head. Negatively charged polar head. 
Uh, so kenapa nak hydrophilic tu, eh, sorry, kenapa had, uh, how to say, kenapa head tu dibanggil sebagai hydrophilic sebab negatively charge head. Kat mana yang negatively charge? Uh, siapa perasan tadi? You can see here, phos, phosphate. Phosphate that is negatively charge. Uh, so bila phosphate bercas negatif, dia boleh bertindak balas dengan air. Hydrogen of the water yang bercas positif positif. Okay. Uh, so, it the negatively charged is refers to the negatively charged phosphate, phosphate group. It represent by the phosphate group. That is negatively charged. Phosphate yang bercas negatif. So, due to that, since it is polar, so it will be facing outward. So, kepala akan menghadap bahagian luar where it can attract to inter intercellular and extracellular fluid. Okay, intercellular ni refer kepada cyto, cytosol lah. Uh, extracellular fluid ni dalam banyak textbook dia akan tulis ECF. Extracellular fluid. Okay, faham? Right, so the the hydrophilic is due to the negatively charged phosphate. So that's why it is always facing outward. Okay, right. So yang ni lah. So kepala mesti akan menghadap bahagian luar. And this, this is the heat. Alright, whereby the hydrophobic um, uh, region of the phospholipid. So the hydrophobic is referred to the uncharged non-polar tails. Uh, so dia dia refer kenapa kenapa dia hydrophobic sebab non polar fatty acid fatty acid. Uh, so it refers or it represent by the non polar fatty acid chains. Okay, that's why it will always facing inside. You can see here nampak tak ni? Ha uh, dia fatty acid chain akan sentiasa menghadap antara satu dengan yang lain jauh daripada water. Uh, okay. Away from water. Okay. Okay, right. So that is phospholipid, right? Uh, so again and again, this one showing you that uh, how the membranes look like ataupun what makes the flap, the membrane is somehow sometimes a little bit fluid and sometimes is viscous condition. So kalau keluar dalam exam, gambar ni, mungkin dia tanya awak uh, what is the state of membrane shown above? Uh, itu dia, viscous. Ni, fluid depends on the fatty air. Fatty acid. Sebenarnya kita tanya, what makes the picture shown as above? Bagi tahu lah, pasal unsaturated fatty acid or saturated fatty fatty acid. Macam tu lah. Okay, right. Okay, number two. Proteins. So we go to the second component of the protein, uh, sorry, second component of the membrane, which is protein. Then after that, we take five minutes break. Okay, right. So again, proteins. There are two types of protein that you can found across or on the membrane. They are integral membrane protein and peri peripheral membrane protein. Okay, uh, so ingat tu. Peripheral maksudnya CC. Uh, so dia duduk dekat tepi-tepi aja. Uh, so this is integral membrane. Eh, sorry, peripheral peripheral membrane protein. Okay. Uh, kalau jenis yang menembusi, menembusi plasma membrane, walaupun separuh plasma membrane, kita akan panggil dia inter, integral. You can see, they are uh, menembusi. Dia macam terowong yang menembusi plasma membrane tu. Okay, right. Yang ni pun soalan suka tanya. Why is the difference between protein A and protein B? Uh, so, you kena tahu. Nama, nama, satu nama dia apa? 
Uh, nombor dua, sifat dia macam mana. Okay, right. Okay, proteins. Proteins on the membrane are amphiphatic. Protein pun amphiphatic juga. So, dia ada hydrophilic region and hydrophobic region. So, meaning to say the phospholipid is amphiphatic, the protein also is amphi amphiphatic. Okay. Tambah dah kan? Okay. Okay. So, next. Let's go into the detail of the protein. Number one. Integral membrane protein. Okay. Integral protein ataupun you nak tambah? Ah, tambahlah sikit perkataan membrane kat tepi ni. Integral membrane protein and this one is peripheral membrane protein. Ah, boleh. Ataupun tak, ya pun tak apa. Integral protein, peripheral protein pun tak apa. Okay. Alright. Let's start with integral protein dulu. Okay, kena salin ni. Eh? Okay. Okay, right. Number one, integral protein. So, integral protein penetrates the hydrophobic interior of lipid bilayer. Penetrate. Dia menembu, menembusi. Okay. Menembusi. Right. So, integral protein penetrate the hydrophobic interior of the lipid by bilayer. Menembusi. Um, bahagian hydrophobic of the uh, lipid bilayer. Okay. And they are typically transmembrane. Uh, sejenis, uh, biasanya adalah jenis transmembrane. Trans maksudnya dia macam terus menerusi. Uh, menerusi something like that. Okay. Menerusi. Okay. So transmembrane. Alright. So integral uh, protein has hydrophilic segment and hydrophobic segment. Okay, apa maksud ayat ni? Okay, kita, kita lukis sekejap. Okay, let's say this is your phospholipid bilayer. You can see that the protein menembusi. It is penetrating the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so dia kata the protein has hydrophilic segment and hydrophobic segment. Okay, mana yang hydrophilic segment? Hydrophilic bahagian mana? Ingat tadi Medan suruh you highlight benda tu. Bahagian yang, uh, bahagian ni, betul? Uh, right? Dan juga bahagian ini. So, this is hydrophilic segment. Bahagian protein yang boleh terdedah kepada uh, air. Right? And in the middle over here, yang ini, yang tengah-tengah core of the phospholipid ni, ini adalah bahagian yang hydropho, hydrophobic. Okay. Habis tu medium apa maksudnya? Apa maksud gambar je? Tak faham lagi kan? Okay. So kita tengok gambar yang sebelah ni. Gambar yang sebelah tu. Okay. Ni 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 ni. Ni ni ni. Tengok. So ini gambar ni sebenarnya ialah gambar pro protein. Ah, Dia sebenarnya protein tu. 
yang telah di X-ray kan. And you can see ini adalah bahagian yang hydrophilic. Yang tengah tu adalah bahagian hydropho hydrophobic. Okay, boleh, bay boleh bayang? Okay, maksudnya kita X-ray kan protein tu. Kita nampak oh ini rupa dia. Okay, so the hydrophilic segment. Okay, bahagian yang hydrophilic ni, bahagian hydrophilic ni. Right, the hydrophilic segment is made of non-helical amino acid. Bahagian hydrophilic terbentuk daripada amino acid yang tidak berlengkar. That's why you nampak bentuk amino acid dia, rantaian amino acid dia panjang, straight aja. Nampak tak ni? Dia adalah daripada rantaian amino acid sebenarnya. Ni amino acid ni. Ah yang tidak berling, berlengkar. Non-helical amino acid. Why the non-polar sorry, the hydrophobic segment is made of non-polar coil amino acid. So bahagian ni nampak tak bentuk Amino acid, rantaian amino acid dia berlengkar-lengkar. So bahagian hydrophobic is made of non-polar amino acid that is coiled into alpha helix. So dia macam ni. Macam tu. Alright. Hmm. Soalan? Soalan? Questions? Tak ada. So soalan mungkin tanya, which of the following is true about, uh, contohlah dia, dia label kat sini, segment A. Uh, so you kena ingat, segment A ialah hydrophilic segment of the protein. It is made of non-helical amino acid. Okay. Okay, boleh? Boleh, boleh? Okay. Next, peripheral protein. Okay, peripheral protein yang mana? Ah, peripheral protein yang duduk dekat tepi. Tepi-tepi CCCC ni. Ha. Okay. okay, so peripheral protein is not embedded. Dia tak melekat, menembusi the plasma membrane but it is loosely bound to the surface of lipid by bilayer. So dia hanya melekat Uh, to the surface of the lipid bilayer. Okay, uh, so that is the protein, integral protein and peripheral protein. Okay. Okay, last one before we go for break. So we are still uh, discussing about the protein. So these are the functions of protein across the membrane. So, okay. So Madam Na, you all salin based on pictures. Bawah gambar tu. Right. So because your, uh, one of your tasks is to, is to make sure you know the <coughs> function of each uh, of proteins. Takut keluar soalan, dia bagi gambar ni what is the function of the following protein shown above. So, you kena tahu protein ni adalah untuk ni. Ni untuk ni. Untuk ni. Okay? Right. Kita pergi yang pertama. Intercellular joining. Inter maksudnya antara. Intercellular joining antara sel. Joining, uh, menghubungkan, right, uh, satu sel dengan sel yang lain. Uh, so that is the first one. Okay, contoh eh, you mungkin tak nampak medan lukis gambar. Let's say this is bacteria A and this is bacteria B. This is membrane of, ni membrane. Ni adalah plasma membrane. Okay, so you can see that membrane bacteria A dengan bacteria B boleh dihubungkan dengan adanya pro protein. So protein dia dengan protein dia. Dia boleh dihubungkan. Understand? So that is intercellular joining. Faham ke? Faham ke? Faham ke? Ah, okay. Ataupun sel jantung dengan sel jantung. Ni satu sel, satu sel PP, yang ni satu sel PP yang lain. Ha. So sel PP A dengan sel PP B boleh berhubung melalui intercellular joining by using proteins. Okay, right. Number two, 
Okay, so ingat eh, kalau gambar macam ni je, the function is for intercellular joining. Okay, gambar yang kedua, enzymatic activity. So you can see here, this is protein. Protein can help to convert one substance into another pro product. Contoh, you can see from A, protein can help it to change into B. And B can change into C by using another pro, another protein. So this is enzymatic acti activity. Macam mana protein terlibat dalam tindak balas enzim? Okay. Right. Number three, transport. Some protein work ataupun serve as transport protein. Sebagai protein pengangkut. Contoh, you can see. Molecule A daripada luar from extracellular fluid can be transported into the cyto, into the cytosol. Benda yang daripada luar boleh dibawa masuk ke dalam sel melalui protein. Uh, so this is protein that serve as trans transport. Okay? Right. And then next one, cell cell recognition. Recognition maksudnya apa? Recognize. Recognize maksudnya? Mengenal. Okay. Mengenal pasti. Betul? Mengenal pasti sel dengan sel yang lain. So you can see gambar ni. This is membrane untuk sel A. Ini adalah membrane untuk sel B. So sel A nak kenal sel B. Dia perlukan Uh, protein. Sebab dekat protein, remember kita dah belajar tadi, dekat protein ada carbohydrate, carbohydrate that attach to the protein yang kita panggil sebagai glyco, glycoprotein. Uh, so glycoprotein is very important for cell-cell recognition. Contoh eh, contoh. Awak nak derma organ. Awak. Okay, nak derma organ. Ingat eh, bila kata derma organ, organ tu datang daripada tisu. Tisu datang daripada sel. Sel tu ada membrane. So, kita nak derma organ kepada orang kita sayang, contohnya. Alright? So, nak derma organ bukan sesudah sesenang ABC. Contoh awak aksiden, habis dah ni, tak nampak apa dah, tengah tulang je. Isi semua habis. So, kita terpaksa ambil tisu daripada tempat lain. Selalunya doktor akan guna tisu badan kita sendiri. Ambil lah daripada peha ke, atau ambil daripada punggung. Sebab situ kawasan yang paling banyak tisu. Ambil untuk tampal. Biasanya doktor akan guna tisu badan kita sen sendiri. Sebab tisu kita yang dekat punggung kenal tisu kita dekat tangan. Sebab daripada orang yang sama, badan sendiri. Ha, tapi contoh, awak sayanglah perkara awak tu punggung pun sayang, nanti hilang separuh punggung kan contoh. <laughs> Alright? So ada orang nak derma, tak apa saya dermakan tisu punggung saya. Ha, kerana saya sayang kepada dia contoh lah kan. Ha, lepas tu pula yang nak derma kan tu, dia awak putih. Ataupun awak awak uh, putih yang dia mungkin gelap lagi sangat kan. Uh, contohlah, contoh. Okay? Uh, ataupun dia apalah, whatever, terlalu putih daripada awak pula ke, kepok ke kan. Opa-opa uh, tu tak saya nak dermakan tisu saya. Uh, so bukan senang tisu dia boleh diterima oleh tisu kita. Uh, contoh awak, dia derma juga tisu dia, tampal lah dekat kita punya tangan. Bukan sesudah sesenang itu sebab sel dia punya glycoprotein tak sama dengan kita punya glyco glycoprotein. Tak sama. Ha, susah. So kalau transfer juga, kalau tak kena matching, dia akan reject. Sel kita akan reject. Ha, reject tu macam mana Madam? Tampal kan? Sebut lah balik. Eh tak adalah. <laughs> ha, sign of rejection akan keluar daripada badan kita. Badan kita akan tunjukkan rejection tu. Ha, sel darah putih akan reject dengan cara contoh tempat yang tampalan tu akan jadi uh, merah. Ha, okay. Benanah ke awak akan muntah ke, gatal-gatal uh, ke ke tempat tu, itu adalah all signs of rejection. Uh, macam tu. So bukan sesenang itu. Okay, tambahan. So habis tu medan macam mana? Kalau contoh, saya tak nak juga dalam tisu peha dengan punggung saya. Habis tu ni kena tampal. Nak guna apa? Siapa? Yang paling dekat yang boleh menderma kat kita tanpa mak terus. <laughs> uh, very reduced rejection. Paling yang tak ada rejection langsung, kembar. Kembar seiras. Confirm tak ada rejection. Langsung. 
Ah. Abi Medan kalau tak ada kebasi ras? Ha, next next siapa yang boleh derma? Next. Adik beradik dulu. Ha, yang paling dekat yang maksudnya kurang rejection. Ah lepas adik beradik ah baru parents. Ah dia macam tu. Ah lepas tu baru orang luar lah. Ah tapi apa pun kena buat tisu typing dulu. Maksudnya cek tisu awak dengan tisu kita ni matching tak glycoprotein dia jauh sangat ke dekat ke ah inilah inilah dia cell cell record recognition. That's why Allah bagi everyone is very unique to one another because of this glycoprotein. Okay. Ha. Sama juga nak derma darah pun sama. Okay. Ha, sama. Bukan sesenang itu. Okay. Right. Next one. Attachment. Okay. Sikit lagi pasal kita break. Okay. Some protein serve as attachment. So you can see this is protein. Okay. This is protein and this is attachment. Right, uh, ada bahan-bahan yang boleh attach kepada kita punya protein. Contoh macam ni lah, fiber ke ataupun kita panggil cytoskeleton. Uh, tapi you tak belajar, uh, tak apa. Right, untuk support structure membrane dan sebagainya. Okay, and last one, some uh, protein serve as signal transduction. Function uh, to change signal. Mengubah satu-satu uh, signal. Contohnya, ini adalah protein receptor. Ini protein eh, protein receptor. Okey, ini adalah signaling molecule contohnya hormon. Ah contohnya. Bila hormon bind dekat protein dekat kita punya uh, um, um, uterus. Kalau hormon progesteron contohnya, dia bind dekat protein dekat membrane of kita punya uterus. So dia akan menghasilkan tindak balas. Uterus kita pun mana menebal. Ha, macam tu. Faham? Ha, macam tu lah. Okay. Right. So itu function, some protein function to uh, change signal. Uh, for example like hormone bind to the protein and produce a signal. Okay. Alright. So these are six function of proteins. Okay. Right. Any question? So you have uh, at the back page two, you have a um, uh, line untuk function. Eh, sorry, uh, function and also a little bit detail kan? So detail tu, maybe makan bagi you uh, gambar daripada textbook. Nanti you salin. Ataupun you just keep get the keyword from there. Okay, alright. Okay, so take five minutes break and we will continue after this. Okay, take five. Okay, so... Uh, next, right, moving on with carbohydrates, right, carbohydrate that we found on the membrane. So, ada dua, remember, namanya apa? Glycoprotein and also glyco, glycolipid. Okay, kalau lupa, kita lukis. Uh, so, this is phospholipid bilayer, this is the protein. Okay, so on the membrane, remember, They are carbohydrate that attach to the proteins. And they are carbohydrate that attach to the li lipids. Okay. Uh, so these are carbohydrates. So the carbohydrate attach to the plasma membrane usually just a short chains. Short chains sahaja. Lim, uh, rantaian dia very very short like 15 sugars. Dalam 15 gula sah sahaja. Maksudnya kalau contoh ni satu gula. Ni satu gula, ni satu gula, ni satu gula. So dalam lima belas sahaja. So kita panggil sebagai oligosaccharide. Ni. Less than 15 sugars. So we call as oligosaccharide. So kita belajar monosaccharide kan? Disaccharide dua gula. Polisaccharide banyak-banyak-banyak-banyak gula. So banyak tu biasanya lebih daripada lima, lima belas. So kalau kurang daripada lima belas, kita panggil oligo, oligosaccharide. Okay. Contoh oligo Uh, yang jenama coklat oligo tu. Uh, so oligo tu dia, lah kabuk, dia adalah ada gula lah. Uh, so dalam lebih kurang rantaian 15 gula. Okay. Right. So the carbohydrate found on the outside surface of the cell are covalently bound either to the proteins that form glycoprotein or bound to the lipid and forming glyco lipid. So ada dua je. So ingat glycoprotein that is attached to the protein and glycolipid that is attached to the lipid. Okay. Right. Oligosaccharide vary from species to species 
from individual to individual and from cell to cell. Meaning to say, dalam setiap membrane, rantaian karbohidrat itu berbeza. Daripada sel PP dengan sel pankreas tak sama. Daripada orang A dengan orang B tak sama. Okay. Bakteria A dan bakteria B pun tak sama. Okay. Right. Okay, ni ada kena salin? Dah, sikit je. Okay, alright. Next. So, what is the importance of this carbohydrate? Apa fungsi ataupun apa kepentingan carbohydrate attached to the lipid or attached to the protein? It is very important for cell-cell record recognition yang kita bincangkan tadi. Okay. So, what is cell-cell recognition? So, cell-cell recognition is the ability, kebolehan, cell, to distinguish untuk membeza, membezakan, untuk membezakan one cell from the other neighboring cell. Untuk membezakan satu cell dengan cell yang lain. How? By binding to the surface of the molecule. Macam gambar yang kita lukis tadi itulah. Okay. Yang ada dalam uh, slide tadi. Okay, so remember the carbohydrate attached to the protein, so attached to the lipid is very important for cell cell recognition to distinguish or to differentiate one cell from the other, the other cell. Okay, right. So thus, it is important to sort and organizing cell into tissues and also organ. Penting untuk mengasingkan cell cell kepada tissue tissue yang berbeza, right? And it also a basis. Uh, dia juga adalah satu basis kepada reject rejection of foreign cell. Uh, so dia adalah penting untuk uh, rejection tadi lah. Uh, contoh rejection masa bila? Okay. During apa? Trans ah uh, transplant transplant tissue ataupun transplant or organ. Okay, right. It is a basis of rejection of foreign cell rejection ataupun penolakan uh, oleh sel asing penolakan sel asing ni sel asing eh oleh kita punya immune system Alright, next one, we go to the next component of the membrane is cholesterol. Okay, remember how to recognize cholesterol? Four ring, uh, four fused ring. You can see here, this is four fused rings. Empat ring yang bercantum. Uh, four fused rings. So, <coughs> as you can see the four fused rings, so maksudnya itu adalah koles, kolesterol. Okay. Okay. So, in the membrane, the cholesterol is drawn like this. Kalau dalam gambar, kita akan nampak this four fused ring, ring number one, ring two, ring three, and also Ring number four, four fused ring. So this is koles, kolesterol. Okay, right. So highlight ataupun labelkan dalam gambar nota awak tu, uh, that is the kolesterol. And remember, kolesterol will be uh, dispersed uh, along the uh, by bilayer. Ataupun the lipid dah. The phospholipid. Okay, alright. So now, Let's look at the cholesterol. So the cholesterol is located between the phospholipid molecule, right, in animal cell membrane. In animal cell membrane. Kenapa dia highlight kan dekat animal cell membrane ni? Okay, dengar betul-betul. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. Dengar betul-betul. Cholesterol only found in animal cell membrane. Ha. 
Kolesterol hanya ada pada sel membran atau plasma membran of animal cell sahaja. Maksudnya, kita lah contoh kita, kita bukan animal tapi human pun sama. Ada um, kolesterol dekat membran dia. Semua-semua uh, haiwan, right? Itu uh, semua ada uh, kolesterol on the membrane. Okay. And kolesterol tak ada pada, uh, yes, not found in plant cell membrane ataupun plant plasma membrane. Tak ada. Kolesterol tak ada dekat plasma membrane of plant cell. Hmm. Kenapa tak ada? Sebab plant cell dah ada cell wall. Ha. Kenapa tak payah kolesterol dekat plasma membrane of plant cell? Sebab because plant cell has cell wall. Ha. Sebab plant cell dah ada cell wall. So bentuk plant cell jadi tetap sebabkan disupport oleh structure cell cell wall. So dia tak perlukan kolesterol lagi untuk bantu maintain ataupun uh, control the structure of the plasma membrane. Ingat eh? Ha, itu. Okay. So kolesterol is stored as fluidity buffer which resisting menghalang resist menghalang kan? Uh, menghalang ataupun apa? Hmm. Resist. Lebih kurang menghalang lah ya. Alright. That resists changes of membrane fluidity when temperature changes. Dia menghalang ataupun dia meng, menghalang daripada perubahan yang teruk kepada plasma membrane apabila suhu baru berubah. Okay. Tak faham lah madam apa maksud dia. Ingat tak tadi? Membrane kita dalam keadaan yang agak fluid dan ada dalam keadaan yang agak vis. Viscous. Ha. Bila membran kita dalam keadaan fluid ni? Bila temperature ting tinggi. Ha. Sebab tu kita tak cair kalau kita duduk dekat tepi api. Melainkan kalau suhu tu api neraka. Tak adalah contoh. Sebab tu saya cuma insaf kan. And it a little bit viscous when temperature of surrounding is reduced. Ha, sebab tu bila kita naik gunung Kinabalu ke, ha, kan? Tak adalah tiba-tiba awak baru naik, baru sampai terus jadi. Ha, tak ada. Because cholesterol and the membrane resist the changes. Menghalang daripada perubahan tu berlaku. Habis tu medium kan ada orang yang naik ha, tu. Uh, kat mandu tu. Uh, Everest. Kan jadi keras. Dia keras sebab dia dah mati. Ha, sebab dia dah mati. Kalau dia hidup, dia tengah daki. Mana ada dia keras? Ha, okay. Right. Okay. Faham ya tu? Okay. Uh, alright. So that is why. Okay. Right. So plant cell. So a cholesterol is absent in the plant cell. Ingat plant cell tak ada cholesterol sebab it is surrounded by cell cell wall. Okay. Right. Ada lagi nak tanya soalan? Habis tu medium kenapa bila kita ni duduk kat tempat biasa ni tapi bila kita mati kita keras. Kenapa? Kalau awak meninggal masa tu tengah pegang botol air? Lambat dikiamkan. Maka awak memang akan macam ni. <laughs> eh betul lah. Ha. Ha, kenapa? Suhu tak ada pun tinggi sangat ke rendah sangat ke? Sebab apa? Sel dah mati. Bila sel dah mati dah tak ada Tak ada ATP, tak ada tenaga. Alright. Lepas tu, ion-ion semua tak boleh bergerak dalam dah darah. So, masa lawak akan terus jadi, nanti awak belajar bayi tu, cross bridge. Masa kita akan terus jadi ke kejang. That's why dia ada masa, dia ada masa. Bila ATP dah makin kurang, 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 kurang. Right. So, darah pun dah tak boleh jalan. Pada masa tertentu, dia akan jadi keras lah. That's why kalau meninggal, cepat-cepat diamkan. Okay. So masa tu, masa kita masih lembut lagi. Okay. Ha, macam tu. Right. Okay. Habis tu Madam, kan ada orang yang, eh alam, I'm masuk recording. Habis Madam, kan ada orang yang meninggal, dia dah meninggal kiam elok. Tiba-tiba masa orang tengah mandikan jenazah, dia pegang tangan orang tu. Ah, itu macam mana pula? Ha, itu lain macam. Ha, itu lain macam. Eh. Ha. 
Dia terus pegang. Dia tak nak awak mandikan dia. <laughs> Scientifically uh, scientifically punya explanation? Ha, apa tu? Ha. Masal, ha. Masih lagi ada certain part of the uh, muscle yang masih lagi ada ada ATP yang dia jadi jerk macam tu. Ha, okay, itu scientifically brief, uh, explain. Right? But in uh, other than medical ataupun scientifically explain, Uh, yang macam kita belajar ataupun yang kita sedia maklum lah. Uh, macam tu eh. Okay. Eh, Ruan datang balik. Ruan ada. Ruan dah pergi, dah pergi. Okay. Alright. Next. Cholesterol. What is the function of cholesterol in plasma membrane? Apa function dia? Ah, uh, This one. To resist or to reduce membrane fluid, fluidity at moderate tem temperature. Satu. Okay, moderate temperature maksudnya apa? Suhu? Suhu muat sederhana ataupun mungkin tinggi sikit. So, dia kurangkan membrane fluid, fluidity. Suhu sederhana. Maksudnya apa? Maksudnya dalam keadaan kita yang macam sekarang ni, moderate temperature, membrane kita tak terlalu flu, fluid. Ataupun bila suhu agak tinggi, awak pergi jogging ke ataupun awak duduk tepi bara api, Right, uh, Sebab awak nak buktikan yang biar aku genggam bara api demi cinta aku padamu kat contoh lah kan. Alright. Uh, so tak adalah awak cair tepi api tu. Alright. Uh, membrane tu uh, tak ada. Right. So so to reduce membrane fluidity. So dia mengurangkan membrane kita jadi terlalu flu, fluid. So kolesterol kat celah-celah tu actually membantu membrane kita daripada tidak terlalu. Tidak terlalu apa? Uh, tidak terlalu kan tadi ni membrane ni uh, fosfolipid. Kolesterol duduk celah-celah ni. Ah, so supaya dia tak terlalu flu, fluid. Okay. Alright. So to reduce membrane fluidity at uh, moderate temperature by reducing phospholipid move, movement. So macam mana to reduce membrane fluidity by reducing phospholipid movement. Ah, so phospholipid tak adalah makin jauh, makin jauh, makin jauh, makin jauh. Sebab ada koles, kolesterol. Okay. And It also prevent solidification. What does it mean by solidification? Ah, mem menghalang membran jadi terlalu ke keras, ah, solid. Okay, menghalang membran jadi keras at low temp temperature. Dengan macam mana dia buat? By disrupting the regular packing of phospho phospholipid. Menghalang phospholipid daripada terlalu pa. Padat. Sebab tu kolesterol duduk tengah-tengah. Dia macam orang orang tengah yang menghalang dua-dua fosfolipid ni jadi terlalu rah, rapat. Ha, so kolesterol helps the membrane from become to pack. Okay. Ataupun dalam bahasa lain ni lah. Prevent tightly uh, tightly pack of fospho Lipid. Okay, to prevent tightly pack of phospholipid when temperature is low. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, kesimpulan ni kita buat apa? Um, moderate temperature Okay, bila moderate temperature It reduce uh, Reduce membrane fluidity uh, Buat nota ringkas saya senang Reduce membrane fluidity dengan Secara, secara reduce uh, Reduce Movement of phospholipid. Okay. And at low temperature. Ha, dia buat apa? Uh, prevent solidification. Prevent solidification. Uh, prevent solidification dengan 
uh, prevent tightly pack kan uh, prevent tightly pack of force body pain uh, okay so that is the note note for the function of cholesterol how cholesterol act as membrane or fluidity buffer. Ha, ni yang kita panggil fluidity buffer. Kalau temperature tinggi, dia tak menyebabkan membrane terlalu cair. Bila temperature rendah, dia tak menyebabkan membrane terlalu keras. Ha, so, dia jadi buffer kat situ. Okay. Okay, right. So that is function of cholesterol. So you can see the picture again and again, right? You can have this picture in textbook, 198 or in your notes, ada ke gambar ni? Uh, kalau tak ada, sama je. So this is cholesterol in the membrane. Kalau soalan tanya, what is the function of X in the membrane? Uh, so inilah dia, reduce membrane, fluidity at moderate temperature, uh, and then hinder solidification at high uh, at low temp temperature. Uh, hinder means prevent lah. Uh, okay, All right. So sama je. Okay, dengan nota kita. Okay, so the next linear outcome will be transport across the membrane. So lepas ni you akan belajar um, pengangkutan melalui mem membrane. Okay, All right. So in the next class. All right. So far any question? Any question? No? All right. Kalau no question, I'll stop recording.